Hey there, it's Angus from Color Management. I'm talking to you today a little bit about how to convert your photos, your RGB images to the CMYK color space. Um, CMYK is the color space that is used for printing and RGB is a color space that's used for viewing on screen. It's a working space. Um, they're slightly different, obviously, in terms of additive and subtractive. We don't really care about that so much. But what I want to talk to you about is the different flavors of CMYK that you can convert to and some of the misconceptions that are around that. Okay, so first let's talk about the different color settings. Uh, let's talk about the color spaces that are available. Okay, so you can see a long list of them that are available in the color settings dialog box. The standard CMYK I guess you could say, and I'm not going to say it's a standard, but the most common uh, CMYK color space that's used would be the web coded swap standards for web offset printing. This is version two. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between web and sheet fed first of all. Okay. So there's really two main different types of printing that are done in the world. And there's web printing and sheet fed printing. Web printing would be for magazines, for flyers, really for anything that is done in a very high volume printing environment. Generally above 20,000, 15 to 20,000 is where web starts to kick in. I mean, I know some sheet fed presses can go up to 30, 40, 50,000, but economics of scale, the web, which is different in that it doesn't feed the paper through in a sheet. It, it's, it started out on a big roll and the quality of the paper is often much not much lower, but certainly can be lower. And the speed of the press is much, much faster. Now, as a result of the speed, it needs to have a ink limit that's much lower. So you notice when I put my mouse over there down on the bottom in the description down in this area, we have a total ink area of 300. That's the maximum amount of ink that can be had in a web profile. If we look at the sheet fed, we've now gone upwards in the range of 350. So what does that mean? That means that if you add up the darkest black region in that image, those four inks are going to add up to 350%, all four inks. If you add up all four inks in the web, you'll have much lower. Now, if we go down to newsprint, again, we're going to have a lower one again, 220 total ink coverage. So it's how the black is created and how the four other three colors are created in the dark regions in the black how much K is used in converse to the CMY, okay? So there's a different conversion formula for each. So you need to find out where your images are going. If you don't know, if you have no idea where your images are going, your safest bet is to print or convert to the US web coded. It's probably considered the most universal and US web coded version two is probably the most amount of printing that is done in North America. So if you had to guess as to what CMYK profile would be the most universal, then I would choose that, okay? Let's take a look at the differences between the different color spaces, okay? So again, we have Adobe RGB as shown here. We have the an sRGB profile and a web coded, but mostly I wanna show you the difference between a CMYK profile, which is the smaller one on the inside, versus an RGB profile on the outside. One of the biggest challenges in printing is we lose a significant amount of information when we convert to CMYK. That is an inevitable reality. There's no way around it. It's just a reality. We can't get away from the fact that when you convert from a vibrant color image in Adobe RGB to CMYK, you're going to have a color loss. Hopefully, when you do do that conversion, there's going to be an accurate profile describing both situations. So there's two ways you can convert a image in Photoshop to CMYK. There's a bad way, which is mode CMYK. I call that a blind conversion. Basically, it's just taking whatever you have set in color settings, and in this case, it's the US web coded, and using the rendering intent relative color metric, and it's gonna make a conversion. So that's one way to do it. The other way is to use convert to profile. Now, I prefer convert to profile because it allows me to view what's happening in the conversion and see what's gonna happen on the, on, on the output. So you have the ability to choose your destination profile. You have the ability to, to do a little 
preview and see what's going to happen to your images. You have the ability to toggle through a couple of different rendering intents to see if one is going to be more useful for what you're trying to achieve. Um, any of these three are possible if you get an outcome that works better for you. 99% of the time you're going to use relative color metric, but there are times when you may find a particular image with certain blends may do a better conversion in perceptual. So choose the one that you see that works the best for you. I again, use relative color, color metric most of the time. You want to choose the destination profile that suits where you're going. Again, that may be if you're going to a sheet fed coated or if you're going to web coated, maybe your job is going to a matte stock or an uncoated offset stock. Um, so you want to choose either the web or the sheet fed uncoated. It's very important to choose a CMYK profile that is representative of how your image is going to be printed. Okay. And lastly, there's one called Grackle. And Grackle is a new initiative by ID Alliance that will best describe a sheet fed press on a number one stock. So it's similar to the US sheet fed coded, but it's an, I would say a more accurate, no, accurate might be another right word for it. It's more tailored to anyone who's doing a Grackle, who's done a G7 calibration on their press and has a Grackle target in their workflow. So you, if your press, Pre-press shop is saying that we are a Grackle shop, then you would convert to the Grackle profile. Again, there's no right or wrong re, uh, profile that you can use. There's just one that is best suited for what it is that you're doing. So just do your homework and try and find out if it's going to a web press or a sheet fed press. And if you can find out if it's a coded or an uncoded stock that you're printing on. Once you know that, you can choose one of these four or the Grackle. Uh, profile and you can better target your images. Hopefully that'll help you in your conversions to CMYK. I know there's a lot more that can be spoken about in that topic, but that's a bit of an overview and hopefully it helps. If you have any other questions, we are always available at colormanagement.ca um, to field your questions. Feel free to give us a call 